Hello, we are going to discuss about a very important reading comprehension technique today, and this is related to reading a passage which is a little difficult to understand. Like, for example, if you look at this passage, which is on uh, page number 45 of book 9, it is one of the passages from academic uh, passages, but then you can uh, academic test, but you would find the same kind of question sometimes in the general test also. Uh, the important point that I want to discuss in this presentation is how to answer questions related to these kind of passages. So when you read this passage, you would find that the content is quite alien. They are talking about finding the distance between Earth and Sun by some technique called as parallax method. And you would find that they have discussed about very technical stuff related to how to find this distance. And... Uh, uh, for a lay person like me, it is very difficult to get the idea as to what is what are they trying to describe. So if I try to understand this passage and the techniques, it would be difficult for me to understand. But then, does it mean that I can't answer the questions? Of course not. I can still answer the questions. And that's what I am up to. Instead of understanding the passage, I would focus on questions and see... How can I answer questions to this kind of passage? So before you move on, I would like you to go to your book 9 and read this passage, which is there on page number 45. So you would have some idea of what kind of passage is this, and then you would it would make uh, sense to participate in this discussion. You would be able to relate to what I'm saying here. All right, so let's first read the passage. So, in case, I'll, I'll just take you through it very quickly, maybe in a minute's time. But then I would rather like you to read it yourself first. It says Venus in transit. We don't know about Venus, we don't know about transit. So, it does not sound any well in the mind that Venus in transit means what. But then, we know it's, a one, of, it's one of the planets. So, let's try to understand what is he up to. In June 2004, saw the first passage. June 2004, saw the first passage known as transit. Okay, of the planet Venus across planet Venus across the face of the sun in 122 years. Now, again, I'm not able to understand what it's saying. But something happened once in 122 years, and that seems to be something very important. Transits have helped shape our view of the whole universe as some person, Heather, Copper, and Nigel and, and Best explain. So transits have helped us in some way. Now, see, I don't understand what is transit. I don't know what is Venus, but they are talking about these two things which are quite unknown. So, uh, I just try to get a basic idea. On June 8, 2004, more than half the population of the world were treated to a rare astronomical event. For over six years, the planet Venus steadily inched its way over the surface of the Sun. This transit of Venus was the first since 6 December 1882. So something which happened for the first time 1818, after 1882 was in 2004 when Venus surfaced over Sun, some kind of transit happening. I don't know what was that, but then I can imagine that some astronomical event or some uh, celestial bodies like Venus and all, there was some kind of event there in the cosmos. On that occasion, the American astronomer, this guy, uh, a party to South Africa to observe the event led a party. They were based at a girls' school where it is alleged the combined forces of three school mistresses outperformed the professionals with the accuracy of their observations. They set a stage for something which I understand is they are trying to, trying to observe something like a solar or a lunar eclipse. That's what I can relate to. But then some event which happened after quite a long time, 1882 and then 2004, almost more than 20 years. So for centuries, transits of Venus have ex and drawn the explorers, astronomers alike to the four corners of the globe. And you can put it all down to the extraordinary polymath, this guy, and all the passages there. Now I'm not reading it. I'm going straight to the questions to understand what kind of questions they are asked. I understand it's talking about some kind of event which I cannot understand, but you know, since it's about astronomy and I don't know much about it, I would rather see what is what kind of questions there are. Examples of different ways in which parallax principle has been applied. Okay, so some parallax principle is there and it is applied. 
So I can see that the question are questions are related to some statements and they're saying in which paragraph would that statement appear. So these first four questions are like that. And then the next four questions are related to some scientists who are like these four names are given and I have to find who said what. So the second four questions are who said what and the next five questions are true false not given so this would definitely be in a sequence now this gives me a little clue about my reading style that i'll have to read one paragraph at a time and answer questions based on that rather than going all the way to the sequential reading and understanding what all happened i'm not really reading the passage i'm just reading one paragraph at a time trying to understand what has gone there and trying to answer questions based on that i of course mark the names of the scientists here and we'll see how can I get the answer. Now, since I prefer these kind of questions first rather than going to any other question, I would look at this because this makes sense. I can very clearly get who is Edmund Hillary and these guys and, and there are four statements, four questions. This looks easy to me. So let me go to Edmund Hillary here first and see what Edmund Halley said. So I'm looking for Edmund Halley. I'm scanning the whole document to see if I can figure out where Edmund Halley is. Not in the last paragraph, not in the second last paragraph, not in E also, not in D as well. I can see some names. Oh, inspired by Halley. This means Halley has already come before this. I can see inspired by Halley. And uh, for my further reference, I say British, this, this name. So sometime I'll have to look for this. It will be easier for me to look for him. This means Heli has come first. Oh, I can see another name. This is Kepler. So I'll just circle this one also. I have not yet got my Heli one. So, and there is one more name as I can see. No, this is Mercury, not a name. Polymath Edmund Halley. Oh, yeah, here it is, Edmund Halley. So, what is he saying now? I'll read this. For centuries, transits of Venus have drawn explorers and astronomers alike to the four corners of the globe. Okay, so they are traveling here and there. Who are these people? These are explorers and astronomers. These transits have uh, uh, have made them travel here and there. And you can put it down to the extraordinary polymath Edmund Halley. Okay, what has he done? Halley observed a transit. Okay, he observed the transit of the innermost planet Mercury. All right. From the desolate island of this place and this place, he realized that from a different latitude, the passage of planet across the sun's disk, he realized something. Okay, so it's like realization. As if Buddha re realized there is God. You know, so he realized something. Like... Somebody discovered Newton, discovered the principles of gravity when the apple fell down. So, you know, I am relating. He realized that from different lessons. This was his observation. So, this was his observation. What did he observe? He realized that from different latitudes, the passage of the planet across the sun's disk would appear to be differ from different latitudes. Latitude means from different locations, the angle would differ. Okay. But timing the transit from two widely, by timing the transit from two widely separated locations, teams of astronomers could calculate. So, this is like possibility. The parallax angle. Okay. So, people will be able to find out something called as parallax angle. So, this is like parallax angle. How to calculate this? The apparent difference in position of an astronomical body due to a difference in observer's position. Okay. Difference in astronomer's body because of difference in position. In position of an astronomer's body. Okay. Calculating the angle would allow astronomer to measure what was then the ultimate goal. So what is the ultimate goal? The distance of Earth from Sun. Okay. This distance is known as... So this guy gave some idea as to... How to find the distance of Earth from Sun? If you find the parallax angle, you would be able to find the distance from Earth from Sun. First line of every paragraph and last line of every paragraph is very important. 
I would pay more attention to this. So here, what is happening is this this guy Ali did some kind of observation. He found out some kind of angle, and as a result of finding this angle, he said that you can use this angle for finding the distance between Earth and Sun. Now, how does it happen, and what does it happen, and how it is? I'm not really clear. But all I know is that this guy gave gave an idea of a possibility. You know, could be found. Uh, you know, that's the language. Could calculate. Astronomers could calculate parallax angle, <coughs> the apparent distance. Calculating this angle would allow. Means you know, will allow. Nee bolta hai. He's saying would allow astronomers to measure what was the ultimate goal, the distance of this this this. So basically, I get to understand that. Really give this idea for the first time that calculation, calculating with calculating this parallax angle would help us to find. So I was looking at this set of questions. Let me see what did he say? He calculated the distance. No, he didn't calculate the distance. He gave an idea. So not this. He understood that distance of sun from earth could be worked out by comparing observations of a transit. This looks like Edmund Halley. He realized that. Time taken by a planet to go around the sun depends on its distance. No, not really. Witness the Venus transit. Not really. He was doing Mercury. Answer is this one. So I would say put A here. Understood that he understood means he realized distance from sun to earth could be worked out. Could be worked out, and that's where they were also saying, you know, it could be worked out by the as we as we saw it there. By comparing observations of a transit, observations of a transit means watching it from two different places. So those kind of things. Okay. So next is Kepler. So let me go to Kepler, and I see. So see, I'm not reading these statements first. I'm not reading these statements for now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm not reading these statements first. I'm going to the scientists first. I'm reading what the scientists said, and then trying to figure out. <coughs> the right answer. So let me go to Kepler. Halley. Halley was aware of this. Was one of the most fundamentals of this. John Kepler in 17th century had shown. He showed something. What? That the distance of planets from sun governed their orbital speed. So distance determines the speed. There are two things here. Distances of planets from the sun govern their speed. Okay, which were easily measurable. But no one had no one had found a way to calculate accurate distance. So distance. So this is my sun. Just to understand, this is my sun, and this is not sun. This is sun. And uh, what are you saying? Uh, where is that? The fundamental da da da. That the distance of planets from the sun. So distance of planets from the sun. Earth, Mercury, Jupiter, all this. So this det distance determines their speed. So you know. Farther the distance, more the speed, or maybe nearer the distance, more the speed. So some kind of relationship between distance and speed. This was what John Guy said. So Johnny, Johnny, yes, Papa, whoever he is, said that the distance <coughs> determines the speed. I'm not really reading it further. If I could get some idea from the first line, let me just read the last line. As Venus was closer to Earth. Its parallax parallax angle would be larger. Venus is closer to Earth, so this is Earth. This is Venus. Venus is closer to Earth. Parallax angle would be larger. Okay, so things are nearer there. There would be. Okay, so like this is this, and this is something which is nearer. Its parallax angle would be larger. Would be larger. Haley worked out that by using Venus, it would be possible to measure. The sun's distance to one part and all this, but then here they are talking about Halley. I would rather focus on those four lines only. That the distance determines the speed. So I'll go to the answer and see if there is something of that sort. Uh, Kepler he calculated distance of sun from Earth based on observations. He realized the time taken by a planet to go round. Now see, they have said speed in a different way. Time taken by a planet to go round the sun. Time taken to cover some distance. Isn't it speed? You know, the speed equal to distance upon time. So time taken to cover certain distance depends on its distance from sun. Oh, see, you know, so they are using all this mathematics here. Time taken by a planet to go around the sun means the speed of the planet to revolve around the sun depends on its distance from sun. Yeah, so this is what this guy said. 
answer to 20 it is b now let me go to gentle gulami gentle who where is this gentle guy gentle i just mark this one also because sometime i can use this later gentle has he come yet or not not in this paragraph not in this paragraph too oh yeah here it is i marked him i can see gentle is here let me read the first line inspired by heli suggestion for a way to pin down the scale of solar system pin down the scale see what an idiomatic english pin down the scale means measure the distance or how long it is scale <laughs> You can see that the way they use English. Pin down the scale means understand the length of it. Teams of British Frenchmen astronomers set out on expedition. So these guys are roaming here and there in these places. But things weren't helped by Britain and France being at war. The person who deserved most sympathy, oh sympathy means you know he might have failed somewhere. This guy, he was thwarted. Now see the this is a new word. Thwarted is like stopped. or prevented from doing something thwarted by the fact that so you know some kind of hurdle is what this word means by the fact that british were besieging his observation site at pondicherry besieging is like fighting or you know waging a war his observation site at this place in india fleeing on a french warship crossing so this guy is roaming here and there Lee Gentle saw a wonderful transit, so he saw a wonderful transit. But there is a but, and I told you that but is very very important. Whenever you get a but, put a U-turn sign. So something happened, and there is a dash also. You know, so we can get that hint. But the ship's pitching and rolling ruled out any attempt at making accurate observations. And you say accurate observation means what? Are you trying to measure something? Isn't it? So he was not able to. So since this, he was in a ship which was jumping. He was not able to make accurate observations, which means he was not able to measure. Undaunted, he remained sound, south, and he kept on going, 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 going to these places before setting off to observe the next transit in Philippines. So he saw one more transit in Philippines. Ironically, after traveling this much distance, his view was clouded. Oh my God. Out at the last moment by a very, a very dispiriting experiment, disappointing experience. That's why they said he deserves sympathy. So he did a lot of work. He was able to see the transit, but he was not able to make accurate observations because of whatever unfortunate things happened with him. That's the story. Okay, so which statement serves gentle part? Witnessed the Venus transit, but was unable to make any calculations. Of course, this is the one. So you know, instead of reading the whole thing, I'm just focusing on these guys and trying to get the idea of what they said. So now going to the next question, which is the last person. Now, hi. Since there are four options and four names, I don't even have to read that. I can straight away say that he calculated the distance of sun and based on observations. Because this is the only thing left, so why should I waste my time? This is one good way of doing questions. Whenever you get names of people and you say that you see that they have said something, rather than doing anything else, you can just straight away go to the passage and see what they said. You know, just search for these names and read the part which is related to them. You will get the question. I mean, you will you will be able to pick up the answers very quickly. So this is one good thing that you can do for this. I'll be doing rest of the questions in the next presentation. All the best to you. Thank you.